Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes and explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. This year, my team and I flew to London for the 2019 World Championship of Patina, where three distinguished patina artists from around the world came together to see who could most beautifully transform an unfinished dress shoe into a work of art using only alcohol-based leather dyes and shoe polish. Now, most people know a black shoe or a brown shoe can be quite, you know, quite ordinary. You've got a very one-dimensional finish that's probably even applied at the tannery. But above that, you've got something very special, and that's called patina, where you actually start with a shoe that has no finish on it. And then using nothing but some alcohol-based leather dyes, uh, a patina artist is able to build this into a totally one-of-a-kind, special and unique finish. So for this year, we've added the World Championship of Patina, where we have three incredibly talented patina artists that are going to be sitting here, and they have just five hours to work to create their magic and create a masterpiece that will be judged at the end of the day. Stéphane Viette from France is considered one of the grandfathers of Patina and has worked painting shoes and other leather products since 1994. Stéphane is renowned in the world of Patina and has trained many of the industry's top Patina artists. Andrzej Olander comes from Poland and runs one of the largest shoe patina and glissage services in Poland, The Shine. Samuel Norsworthy comes from England and works at Gaziano and Gerling's bespoke department. If Yet is a patina veteran, Sam is a rookie. He started working at Gaziano and Gerling just a few years ago where he does their closing, clicking, patina, and shining on all of their bespoke shoes. So I'm here right now with Sam Norsworthy, one of the contestants in the 2019 World Championship of Shoe Patina, a young uh, apprentice at Gaziano and Gerling working under Daniel Wiegand. Uh, so it's exciting to uh, have you be here. So are you uh, excited? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's much easier to stay calm and sort of things like this, but I just plan on doing what I normally do okay. and just have a smooth transition yeah. into what I do. So how have you prepared? I mean, so this is, I mean, you know, you're starting off with a blank shoe, but as you said, I mean, you've, you've done this before, so are you coming into this with a general kind of vision of what it is that you want to create? Yeah, I've had a few bits of practice before, but obviously we get the shoes first, clean them, and then we can start with the patina, cream, mm -hmm. polish, just the, na the normal standard stuff. Yeah. So what type of patina are you uh, going to um, be working Kind of like a smooth, smoky, keep it quite light, okay. so it's, it's more impressive. Okay. But and then will you be doing a lot of work with the polishes afterwards yes. to kind of really bring that out? Yeah, so I aim sort of maybe three and a half hours, three hours for patina, and then the rest of the time polishing. Okay. And what are, the, what are the tools that you'll be using here? I mean, we've got the dyes, but uh, you know, it's really not all that complicated. Do you mind showing us kind of? Well, first we've got the, the decoupon for the, all the cleaning. And then afterwards... And that's really for preparing the leather to really take the dye? Yeah, to take all the layers off so okay. the dye can actually penetrate. So once we've cleaned the leather, we can then use the patina itself with the brushes. And you'll be mixing your own colors? Yeah, we're mixing colors uh, and using the multiple colors that we have. We've got to choose five. Um, and then obviously once I've mixed the colors, I'll create my own effect with that. And after my patina is done, I can use these creams. And then after the creams, once that's dried, I can use my polish and then build up the layers. And then you're just using paint brushes. I mean, it's um, yeah, I've got my hang hanger projects. Oh, there you go, your high shine chamois. I've, you've really put some good use into this. We've got to send you another one then. Yes, please. We're excited to see what you're able to put forward to us today. And it's you know, five hours seems like a lot of time. A lot of time, yeah. But, um, We'll see if it feels like that actually once you get started. Hopefully it plays off. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thank, Thank you. Look forward to seeing how you do soon. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah.
So these are the patina brushes that Samuel's going to be using. And you can see that this is really like painting. It really is a work of art. You know, uh, the artist has his brushes. He's going to mix these uh, primary colors into special colors, you know, just like you would the palette of oil paint. Uh, and then he's going to slowly begin building the finish of these shoes, first starting out with a base and then finishing with the patina. Uh, so we will now uh, look at the shoes and uh, at 5.30 we will announce the winner and uh, after that we will have uh, the award ceremony for the World Championships in Shoemaking. Okay. So, at 11.15 this morning, three guys came up here and started uh, a very long day for them. Uh, I'm going to bring you forward now. Uh, we have uh, Andrzej Olander from Poland. Welcome. Woo! Yeah, give them a big round of applause now. Uh, we have Stefan Villette from France. Welcome. And we have Samuel Mosworthy from England, somewhere there. Okay, so the deal was to... Uh, come on, son. Uh, they had a, a crust leather shoe from TV Mallorca, uh, from the retailer Skulix. Uh, and then they had Saphir uh, uh, color and uh, wax and creams to make an as beautifully painted shoe as possible. 
Uh, so what the jury now has done is that we've been uh, going through them on the criteria, both the overall beauty, uh, the technique, the difficulty, how well it was executed and looked at a lot of different things. I'm just going to present the jury briefly. Uh, it's me, Jesper Ingevaldsson of Shoegazing. It's Justin Fitzpatrick of the Chew Snob. It's Thomas Braunschweig, uh, who works for Ducal and worked with Patina for many years. It's Mikael Håkansson from Magic Mike Patina. It's Katja Mora from Avel. It's Emil Johnson from Skolix. It's PJ somewhere there you have him from, uh, he works for my mother, John Tiflaneur. Uh, it's Norma Villalta. And uh, did I forget someone? Uh, no? That's it. <laughs> okay. And I can tell you that it was really a difficult jury review. Um, that's what I thought when I was uh, going around looking at your shoes when they were starting to get towards the end. I was thinking that, Jesus, I don't have a clue which I think is best. Uh, and then we started looking at them up close and we had a, actually quite a good discussion. And the thing is that we found real strong parts on all of them. As you can see, they're amazing jobs. And we also found some weak weaknesses. So we discussed it all and we went through them. And uh, uh, we had actually needed to have a vote to decide the winner because uh, there was uh, all shoes, uh, some of the jury members wanted uh, one of the shoes to win, so to speak. So all the shoes have uh, a fa favorites among the jury members, so to speak. You have to excuse my English, I'm from Sweden, so uh, I do my best. Okay. But uh, the winner will receive uh, this uh, uh, shoe from Skrullix, uh, made by Tilby Mallorca. And uh, they will see, receive a, a shoe care kit from Saphir. And of course the glass plaquette uh, that uh, presents you as the winner of the first World Championship in Shoe Patina. And also the shoe will get to travel around the world to uh, ten, uh, around 10 locations uh, where it's showcased together with the top three of the World Championship in Shoemaking. Uh, so that's uh, really a quite big thing. Among other things, it's at Isetan Men's in Japan, probably the largest shoe department in the world where the shoes will be showcased. But okay, I will quit bullshitting and uh, announce the winner. Um, okay, so... The first world champion in shoe patina is from Stefan Ville. Congratulations. And to Sam Northworthy and Andrew Holander, amazing job. Really impressive what you've done there. Really impressive. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and we love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. I'm here at the 2019 World Championship of Shoe Shining and World Championship of Patina. I'm here with Thomas Brunswick. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So Thank Thomas, you. Uh, Thomas was actually a contestant in last year's World Championship of Shoe Shining, but he's here to talk to us about Patina because he actually trained under this year's first place winner, Stefan, and he actually was the one that then trained and passed on his knowledge to Samuel Norsworthy, uh, who also was a finalist in this year's championship. So, uh, you know, the Patina work here is absolutely incredible. I think this so accurately shows just the scope of what you can do through Patina. We have a very traditional shoe, something that you could see out of the Gatiano and Girling uh, factory. Uh, incredible, beautifully well done. We have this, uh, this shoe, which was done from the contestant from Poland, showing some of the streaking and texture put into the leather. And then you have our first place winner, um, who has this beautiful kind of green, dark green patina. So, you know, as a judge, you know, talk to us a little bit about the things that you guys considered and how you really came to determine who the first place winner was going to be. Well, the three contestants were extremely, extremely good. Uh, the discussion we had to uh, pick who was going to win was incredibly long. We argued for a, a long time. Uh, so we have very three different approaches. As you said, this one has a more wood effect. 
uh, and an approach that we see a lot since the past five, six years in Patina. Uh, this one is very subtle in the approach. It looks like a shoe that could have uh, aged uh, almost naturally. Obviously, it's not completely natural, but it's getting towards natural. Uh, and has a great translucency on uh, the, the polish work. And then this one is closer to uh, a work we see with French makers, uh, such as Berluti or Pierre Corte. Uh, so the three approaches are very, very different. Um, in the end, what won probably uh, for Stéphane Villette uh, is the fact that it's more striking, it's more recognizable as a patina. Uh, the cleanliness of his work was second to none, uh, so he definitely uh, deserved the first place. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I really appreciate about this shoe, and we have some footage of the actual competition itself, is he started out with this bright green base patina that whenever I saw that, I was like, oh, there's no way that's going to turn out uh, in any way of being attractive. And then over the course of five hours, he evolved this into this you know, really dynamic, multi-dimensional, multi-colored shoe that Definitely. so well represents you know, what people appreciate about proper patina. Absolutely. When well, Stefan is a very modest, but uh, he's, a, he's a musician with leather. He really, really knows I mean, what he's he doing. I mean, he is a true master. I mean, Absolutely. he's probably one of the leading yeah. French patina artists right now. Most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Uh, yeah. he, he actually uh, could be more recognized than he is because his work is second to none in terms of quality. And so who is he doing patina work for? Is, you know, in France, will they send it out? You know, will various shoemakers send out? Or is he taking shoes that have already been made? Uh, he does both. Uh, I am not uh, able to disclose uh, who he works with because sure. that's confidential. Mm -hmm. uh, but he does work with uh, many uh, brands. The only one that uh, he's very open about is the, uh, Stéphane Jiménez, okay. who is the French bespoke maker okay. uh, that has very elongated, modern looking lasts. Um, and then he also works for private customers. Yeah. Um, so uh, he gets the shoes sent to him and then sends it back once the work is done. Yeah. And then these other, I mean, this one right here from Sam, again, an exceptional shoe. I mean, it's got some of the same depth, but it doesn't pop as much as this one does because of the, this doesn't have the contrasting it's colors. It's exactly that. The contrast is not the same. So this one looks more natural in some way, which was very pleasing for some of the jury. Yeah. Uh, like, we can really see that there, there is a softness in the transition of color, uh, which is a very natural in some way. Uh, that's what a lot of the jury was looking for. Uh, on the and other a beautiful hand, shine on top of it. It's very beautiful. I mean, the heels, I mean. Yeah, it's, it's really, really amazing work from Sam. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Stefan works for something very contrasted, very, with very light zones, some are very dark. Uh, that really makes it one of a kind patina. Mm -hmm. On the, and, and then our last contestants really uh, went for something that is a bit in between, like not as contrasted as Sam, but there is uh, material, there is a texture in it, uh, which makes it a very, very serious contestant. Uh, and he had a, a lot of applause and praise uh, from all the jury members. Yeah, yeah, and, and a very interesting way to kind of put you know, the linear texture into the shoe, like what you described as wood. Absolutely, absolutely. It has this effect that seems Natural while not being not natural at all. For leather, obviously, it's not something you would see, but it gives something that's very different as well. Yeah. So it and was a great effort. He also took a different approach on the shoelacing, doing the cross. Um, and then, of course, this shoe, I mean, exceptional, superb, very French. Extremely French. Couldn't be more French. Yes. For sure, for sure. And that's more of a British approach. Absolutely. It is. It's, I mean, you know, one of the things that had to make this particularly difficult is that, you know, in so many ways, I mean, both of these, as you said, were technically perfectly executed. Yes. Right? Um, but it just came down to, in some ways, taste and preference. It was a bit, uh, it was details as well. Yeah. Uh, there was very small details of, uh, of uh, cleanliness, uh, technicality that we looked at, uh, and that um, made the de final decision. Yeah. Uh, two of these were very, very close uh, for the final decision, uh, and uh, the one that won made it on details. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Kirby. And uh, appreciate uh, you, Thomas, for uh, kind of sharing your opinions here. And uh, anyway, we look forward to seeing more great work come out of uh, your career. So, well, thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Cheers.